I had the question of cellulite formation recently on the 24-hour carnivore live stream with coach Stephen Thomas and Richard Smith. I'm going to explain it much more uh, detailed here for those that are interested so you can understand better both how cellulite actually comes about as well as how to prevent it and how to treat it as well if it's already there. It starts, as with many things, with what you eat. Specifically, it's initially to do with whether the diet that you have is conducive to fat storage. Now, this is an interplay between the macronutrients and insulin. Let me explain. When you look around at the uh, food sources in the world, it's either plants or animals. And in plants, it's generally carbs with protein, animals or fats with protein. But you never really get all three together in nature in, in roughly even and significant amounts, unless you're talking about breast milk. So one of the offshoots of this is our metabolic pathways being set up for these combinations of nutrients, plants and animals. Specifically, it's something called the Randall cycle. I'm not going to go into it in massive depth here. I'll probably do it in a video separately, but in layman's terms, it's an observable biochemical process that occurs in our bodies. It's a mechanism that allows the cell to decide whether to use carbohydrates or fats for fuel in layman's terms. Um, or if you want to be technical, you could say whether it's going to oxidize glucose or fatty acids. That's why it's also called the glucose fatty acid cycle. Now, when we mainly eat carbs, we burn those, it doesn't actually burn. Um, when we mainly eat fats, we burn those instead to keep it simple. These substrates can cross inhibit each other in the cell, but the question is, what happens when we have both? How does the cell decide what to do? Well, some of the things that play a role in this decision is how much insulin there is, how much glucose there is, whether the cells presented the GLUT4 transporter to the cell membrane, whether AMPK, adenosine monophosphate kinase is activated, etc etc it can get pretty complex uh, when insulin is high we have a signal or an influence from the hormone to take in the glucose into the cell and prioritize that over the fatty acids sometimes insulin will get glucose into the cell and sometimes it won't and, and depending on how this entire process plays out we might end up storing the fat for later use or storing some fat for later use i won't go into any more detail than that here because it's a very deep topic for another day but essentially what you need to understand so far is that the dietary choice in terms of the macronutrient profile, whether you're eating carbohydrates and fat in the same meal or not, can lead to the cells deciding to store fat. And also whether you increase the amount of inflammation you have in your body. And inflammation is key for cellulite to actually form. Now, once we go into storage mode for those fatty acids, we end up making new fat cells to store all that new fat in. Now, these new fat cells need blood supplies, just like new houses that you build need electricity and plumbing lines and sewage lines connecting them to the grid. But the problem in this situation is that the rate of growth or, um, or, or, or fat storage can sometimes be quicker than the rate at which the body can create new blood vessels to feed those new fat cells and meet their metabolic requirements. So you end up in this situation where you've got new, new cells that have been rapidly made to keep up with storage requirements and are waiting to be given oxygen and nutrients as well as having waste products taken away from them. But no one comes because there wasn't enough time to build a network that was ready and waiting to feed them. So the rate of blood vessel creation hadn't kept up with the rate of fat cell creation, um, put simply. And as a result, these new fat cells can become what we call hypoxic, which means that they're being um, like suffocated of oxygen. And once that happens, those cells start to inflame more because they're in trouble. And once inflammation sets in, then the environment becomes much more acidic and the environment outside the cells, called the extracellular matrix, ECM, becomes dysregulated and the cells can't function normally. But then this ECM dysregulation can lead to more inflammation, which then sets the cycle off again. So it's like a downward spiral or a vicious circle, if you like. And just to throw fuel on the fire here, by the way, when you have a really large amount of fat, that can also increase the level of inflammation there is in this tissue. This, once again, sets the whole cycle off, so it's actually making itself worse over time. 
This is why cellulite isn't something that you should just leave. You need to treat it early or risk it getting much, much worse and therefore much harder to treat. And if you leave it for a certain amount of time, you can reach a pathophysiological or pathological stage where you simply have to just have to go surgical and there's nothing else you can do. Now, once we have this vicious circle or downward spiral in place, the inflammation then causes certain changes, which lead to that orange peel appearance we see on the skin in areas of cellulite. What's happening is that the fat is normally stored in specific uh, like bags, if you like. i am trying to keep to layman's terms here if I can. And this bag is really smooth and, and tight, so it can hold everything in a, in a nice shape. And the bag is made, if you're interested, in, of something called Fibulin 3. And, and during these inflamed times, an enzyme comes along to start to degrade this bag. Again, if you're interested, the enzyme is called MMP14, matrix metalloproteinase 14. And when this bag becomes weaker, the fat inside can start to poke through. Like when our shopping bag becomes weaker, the things can poke through and completely change the contour of the bag surface where it's poking through. This is what the fat's doing. By poking through, we lose that smooth appearance and it looks textured on our skin surface. All of this is why cellulite has its specific appearance. It's also why it can be quite cold to the touch with less blood flow, which gave us hypoxia at the start, remember. Um, and so we have less heat here with less blood flow. And actually when we press into cellulite with our finger, we can see that the skin can take quite a lot of time to rebound back depending on how advanced the um, cellulite pathology has progressed there. If you wanna read into this, there's a paper with the reference CRU 2017, which I'll link in the description below, which you can read. Now this paper isn't perfect and I, I don't agree with everything it says, but the biochemical aspect of this downward spiral pathophysiology, I think is pretty decent if someone's interested. I'm gonna give you some tips now on how to get rid of this. I won't go into massive detail because the point of this video is just to explain the formation. Um, so, so anyway, remember these particular things. Treat it as early as possible. Um, don't use treatments which increase inflammation like radiofrequency or injectables that cause fibrosis. Don't try to work it off with exercise because it's just not gonna happen. Um, and finally, any treatment that you have for it needs to neutralize the acidity in the tissues or the inflammation will just never go away. And you'll never actually break this vicious circle or downward spiral to, to go back up again. If you want me to go through how to properly treat it at its biochemical root cause, instead of trying to create scar tissue to cover it up, which seems to be what a lot of people offer for some reason, then let me know in the comments below because I don't wanna make content that has no audience. And the treatment option that I use in clinic does it in just a few weeks, practically every single time, which makes it very consistent. Unlike um, you know, options that blast it with heat or use things like polyl lactic acid, which do absolutely nothing for any of this pathophysiology whatsoever. And if someone does offer you a treatment option like that, see if they know any of the, the pathology of cellulite that I've spoken about here today. If they don't, then it explains why they think they can use inflammatory treatments to increase inflammation in a pathology that's formed as a result of inflammation in the first place, including other aspects of inflammatory pathways.